Must have been unconscious for a while. My head feels fuzzy, kind of like I'm swimming through darkness. When I came to, there was a woman standing there. A woman I don't know. At least, I don't think I know her. And then there was a man with a gun. I don't know him either. Well, probably not anyway. Now, I'm not... Now, I'm not the kind of guy who can just stand back and watch a poor woman get shot, but I have just one little problem. I'm already dead myself. This has got to be me. No question about that. After all, do you see any other dead bodies lying around here? So long, sister. I feel bad for her, for sure. But what can I do? I'm dead. But just as I was thinking this... This is no time to be lolling around. You are the only one who can save her. What the? The whole world just changed on me. I guess this is as good a time as any to do my intro. Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. This is a game written by Shu Takumi, the writer for the first three or first four Ace Attorney games as well as Great Ace Attorney and Great Ace Attorney 2. And this game I would say is just as good. It's getting a remaster later this year and I am super excited for it. So, I don't want to say too much because I think the game will go ahead and explain it for me. So without further ado, let's just get into this. What the? The whole world just changed on me. Welcome to the ghost world, the land of the dead. Voice in my head. Who are you? No time for introductions now. You have to save her. I know you can do this. All you have to do is use your powers. Huh? Me? Save her? Uh, how? Take a look at your corpse. Do you see that blue flame? That's your soul. And do you see that bright white spot nearby? That's a core. A core? Hmm. Just looks like a, rail a railway crossing gate to me. Look, the best way to understand it is to just try it. First of all, try touching your soul. Next, with your fingers still on it, slide your soul across to connect with the core. Congratulations! Your soul has now possessed the crossing gate. So, what? Now I'm a crossing gate? Ahem. Now then, use the crossing gate to save the woman. What? But how? In a moment, time will start to flow normally once again. That will be your chance. Listen, when the man pulls the trigger, the woman dies, right? So before that happens, you have to try your to use your powers to stop it. Hey, wait a second. I still don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you'll see. You'll see. Now then, time will start to flow again. Oof. Hold it. Well played. Uh, what just happened? That was one of your powers at work. A ghost trick. You mean, I made that crossing gate move? That's right. You manipulated that object with the power of a dead, with a power of the dead, a ghost trick. And all you have to do to perform a trick like that is touch the trick button. Now the woman's fate has changed, albeit just a little. Yeah, she still kind of has a gun pointed at her. Hmm. Yes. That's not good, is it? But at least now you're starting to figure out how to use your your powers. So I enter the ghost world with a with ghost, possess an object, and then perform a trick with it, huh? Now you're getting it. Let's move on to the next step. Try possessing a different core. Well, we can't really possess this wrecking ball over here, so let's try this guitar. I see. A guitar then, is it? <clears> hmm. <throat> hey, what do you want from me? I would have preferred that giant wrecking ball. That would solve the problem real quick, I bet. But I guess I can't reach cores that are too far away. Well, I guess we'll see what you can do with that guitar. Let's set time in motion again and find out. Who's there? Hold it. 
Uh, that's gotta be some of the slowest running away I've ever seen. Hmm. Looks like I'm gonna have to come up with something more. Let's see, what core is close enough to possess from here? I guess all there is, is me. No time to be picky, I've got a woman to save. I like your attitude, it's admirable truly, but... But what? If I can manipulate objects, then I ought to be able to mani manipulate my own corpse, right? Well, tell you what, why don't you just try it and see? Go ahead and possess your corpse. Alright, now we'll set time in motion. Okay, go ahead and try the trick button. Huh? Nothing's happening. Exactly. Sad but true, I'm afraid. You can only manipulate non-living things. Corpses, even if they aren't alive anymore, aren't really just ordinary things. You've got to be kidding. Wait, what about the woman? What's happening to her? Let's take a look, shall we? If you want to take a look around, you can slide the screen. Slide the screen? It's easy. Here, give it a try. Touch the screen and slide it in any direction you want. Well, sister, this is it. Two things are looking pretty dim right now. My eyesight and your future. Out of my way. It's done. I'm on my way. In the end, it looks like her fate remains unchanged. So what good are these ghost tricks of mine? But just as I was thinking this... Hello there! How are you feeling? Not very well, I imagine. Terrible tragedy what happened tonight. Ah, ignoring me, are you? It's a little too early for you to be so stiff and cold, I say. Ah. So it was you. You were that voice in my head, right? Well, I wouldn't say voice, exactly. The dead don't have voices, you see. It's more like my thoughts were being beamed directly into your mind. That's another little trick ghosts can do. Looks like my ghost tricks didn't do much good. She still ended up just as dead as before. That's true. For now. For now. I still have more to teach you about the powers of the dead. Your ghost tricks. Who exactly are you, anyway? Before I answer that, I think we should save this young lady first. Isn't it a shame to see such a pretty young woman lying here like a discarded piece of trash? But what can I do? She's already dead. Time for more ghost lessons for you, my friend. First of all, I'll have you possess me. Possess you, eh? Once you've done that, I'll tell you about another one of your powers. Why am I so determined to save this woman? After all, it's not like I know her. But I guess I'll take the desk lamp up on his invitation anyway. My reason is twofold. Number one, I'm not the type of I'm not the type to leave a woman lying around discarded like trash. Number two, I don't have anything else to lose at this point. Trick time! So now you can see the basic, like, what this game is all about. Now, if we go ahead and press X, or if you tap the, uh, bubble there. That shot bubble you just touched, those are your thoughts, what you're saying to yourself in your head. My thoughts, eh? So the dead don't have voices. 
and what we think is communicated directly to one another, and what we think is directly communicated to one another. So these thought bubbles are sort of a stand-in. I think I'm starting to get it. I think so too. Just remember to always keep an eye out for thought bubbles. Okay, good idea. I just might get some important clues from them. Now then, in order to possess me, you first have to enter the ghost world, and the ghost button is your ticket, or the L button. The best thing to do is try it. The ghost button, eh? Guess I'll give it a little touch. So yeah, there are a couple of different... Because the main screen, the big one that I'm showing right now, is actually the bottom screen. The small one on the right is the top screen. And so mostly this game, you can either use the touch screen the entire way through, which is what I did on my first playthrough, or there are also buttons that you can use that are mapped to different things, like the ghost button, for example, is L. I want to make our way over to the lamp there. By the way, have you taken a look at the top screen? What about it? It tells you what trick you can perform with the object you're currently possessing. The information is there for you to check out whenever you need it. So in the case of this folding cot, it looks like I can unfold it. And to perform a trick on the object you're possessing, you have to return to the land of the living. Oh, okay. This time, the back button is your ticket out of the ghost world. Well, good luck. I'm counting on you. Huh? Who's this we? You press B, and then A for trick. Now we can go ahead and talk to the lamp right over here. Hmm, that's funny. What is? My corpse and her corpse. There's definitely something different about the two. There's something emanating from my corpse. That's because you're special. What's that supposed to mean? Not everybody who dies gets special powers, you know. So those waves are because of my powers of the dead, eh? Anyway. Congratulations, you passed. Well, what do you know? What prize do I get? A new power, what else? Another one? Now, let's review. You can possess objects and manipulate them, right? Now, what do you suppose will happen if you possess a corpse? Nothing, because I already tried that, remember? Nothing happened at all. True, you don't have the ability to manipulate a corpse. However, there is something else you can do. Oh uh, yeah? What's that? Why don't you try it and see? What's this? Can you hear me? Wait a minute. What's going on here? Hmm. It looks like she's unconscious, the poor thing. Unconscious? But she's dead. Yes, but think back. Remember when you died? When you came to your senses, you'd been unconscious too. Unconscious, eh? Come to think of it, the desk lamp is right. When I came to, I was already dead. Let's leave her like this for now. And while she's resting, we can save her life. Oh sure, you make it sound so easy. And it is easy. When you use your powers on a corpse, you can go back to the past to a time four minutes before the person's death. Are you serious? Back through time? That's right, but that's a catch. It only works on new corpses, corpses that have been dead for less than one day, and she's still well within that limit. You might want to give it a try before it's too late. But this is crazy, none of this makes any sense. We're talking about the powers of the dead here, it doesn't have to make sense. Now then, let's go, shall we? To the time four minutes before this woman was murdered. It, hey, wait a second, I still don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you'll see, you'll see. Time to rewind time. I didn't intend to make a joke there, but you know what, let's roll with it. And so now I'm going back in time to witness this woman's last four minutes alive. Not as a fuzzy, distant memory of the past, but as a very real living present.
Wake up! Are you okay? What happened to you? Oh no, he's dead. Who are you? Here's my business card, right here, sister. My glow golden friend. You did this. You killed him, didn't you? Instead of playing who done it right now, you ought to be more concerned about your own fate. Who are you? Some sort of a hitman? What do you want with me? They said we had to rub out all the last traces of Temsic left in this country. Temsic? What in the world is that? Beats me. I just do what I'm told. All I know is, you've got no one else to run to. Time to die, sister. As long as that bad boy Wrecking Ball stays right up there where it belongs. Look, all I want to know is, who are you? You don't know me, and I don't know you. This is just business. So long, sister. Oof. Hold it. Who's there? Hold it. A shotgun? Kind of a flashy weapon weapon for a hitman, don't you think? Not flashy, just thorough. They call me nearsighted Jigo, but I never let my prey get away. Ever thought about just buying a pair of glasses? Well, sister, this is it. Two things are looking pretty dim right now. My eyesight and your future. And there you have it. The last four minutes of our life. No. It's kind of ironic when you think about it. A woman toyed with by fate and a man toyed with by a ghost. But she still died. Yes, and you can change that with your ghost tricks. Just like you did four minutes ago. Possess and manipulate, eh? Ghost and then trick. And you can rewind these four minutes as many times as you like to. Now then, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. So this is four minutes ago, eh? Fine, I get that. But what am I doing way down here? That's just how it works. Our corpse was your gateway to, into the past, after all. So naturally, your starting point is where her corpse was. And this is where she died. Okay, I get it now. Hop in, then. So this is basically just going to be what we're going to be doing. I think there might be some dialogue here. There are only four minutes left before she dies. You had better try and get to her as fast as you can. There's no time to lose. Who are you? So now our goal is to make it to the top. I think he'll go and explain here, but our goal is to make it, make our way to the top and try to see what we can do. The last seconds of her life are counting down. Looks like I better get up there fast. That's right, have a look at the top screen. The top screen, eh? The sand in the top of that timer is how much time she has left. Get to her click quickly before all the sand is gone. Up you go then. So, yeah, we actually have a time limit here. Time stands still when we're in ghost mode, but when we're doing all this tricking and stuff like that, we want to make sure we're going about it quite quickly, because if we don't, things will progress, and even if time doesn't run out, there might be something that gets blocked off as time progresses. Who are you? Some sort of hitman? What do you want with me? They said we, have to, we had to rub out all the last traces of Temsic left in this country. Temsic? What in the world is that? Uh-oh. Her timer's running out. So... Typically in puzzles like this, there are a few things that have different, you know, cogs and stuff like that that all need to be brought together in order to make sure you're doing this correctly. So we want to take this flag and write it to the top of this pole here, which will allow us to get back to where we were before. 
So to do that, to do that, we want to turn on the fan, and then immediately go ghost, and then turn on the blender. And this, you know, sequence of events allows for the flag to move upward, I guess. So long, sister. Just a few more steps. Hope I make it in time. Time is passing. You're gonna see that graphic a lot as we continue because it happens every time, you know, a cutscene happens and stuff like that. This game does have you seeing some of the same stuff over and over again, but it never got old for me, honestly, whenever I played through this game. Now's your chance to change your fate. There isn't much time left. This is coming down to a battle of seconds. So now we have access to this bike here, and we also have a countdown to her death. Uh, we want to go ahead and ring the bell on this bicycle. Damn it! What is going on here? Nearsighted Jigo never misses, as long as the target is within point-blank range. <laughs> Looks like you made made it in time. Just barely. Yep, she's still alive. In that split second, hope was born. Just now, her fate was changed, albeit ever so slightly. Fate changed. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. The bridge is up. Now, we can go ahead and use the pedals on this bike. I'm gonna go ahead and read those thoughts in a second. You said her fate was changed, but it looks like she's still in the same predicament. I said her fate was changed ever so slightly. I guess I'm gonna have to take care of that guy once, for, once and for all. But there isn't much time left, depending on what you do. There's still the possibility of failure. I don't want to think about failure now. No, of course not, but still. If you ever feel like you want to start over, just press the, the hourglass button before time runs out. Although, you never know. You might learn a thing or two when time runs out too. Alright, I'll keep that in mind. But right now I'd better go after those two. So yeah, sometimes it's better to just watch things unfold because, you know, sometimes there are things where you have to wait till like the very last second before doing something. Which can be a bit annoying, but... You hear something? Now what we can do is we can... extend this ladder right here. Which gives us the perfect path, path up to this claw. How does it feel to save a lady's life? So, the danger is gone? Yes, it looks like the danger, Mr. Danger in fact, rolled away somewhere. You used your powers to avert that woman's fate. So I did all that, huh? You most certainly did, and I knew you could do it. Fate averted. So I lost my life tonight, and saved somebody else's life. When I came back to the present, it was raining. I had saved the life of this stranger now sitting forlornly in the rain, even as the story of my life on this planet comes to an end. A stranger. A word strikes a chord, and a terrible truth begins to dawn on me. I can't recall a thing. Who am I? What is this place? Most importantly of all, why was I killed? Your story isn't over yet. Who exactly are you, anyway? Just call me Ray. 
as in ray of light in the darkness. <laughs> ray, huh? So you aren't going to tell me your real name, I take it. You haven't told me your name yet either, actually. I... I can't remember. Yes, I guess the memories of the newly departed tend to get a bit confused. Some of us get our memories back, others never do. But if you ask me, does it really matter? After all, there's only one path left to the dead, and that is to disappear. Disappear? When the sun rises in the morning, I'm afraid you are going to cease to exist. What? Tomorrow morning? But wait a minute, these powers of the dead. Yes? I'd like to use them to save somebody else's life. And whose life might that be? Do you even have to ask? Mine, of course. Ah, I see. But think about it this way. If we could use ghost tricks to save ourselves, when I have tried to save myself as well? I mean, look at me, I'm a desk lamp. Why a desk lamp anyway? I'm not really sure myself, to be honest. But in any case, it seems we are unable to use our powers on our own corpses. You're kidding. It'll only exist in this world until tomorrow morning. I'm afraid that fact can't be changed. So there's really no escaping my own death. In the morning, I'm going to cease to exist. Apparently, there's nothing I can do to change that. But, just the same, I still want to know. I want to know my story. The lost story of my fate, right up to the time of my death. And until I learn that, you won't be able to rest in peace, right? Very well, I understand how you feel. You want to go and learn about the truth about your own death, as well you should. I will. Let's see. How should I go about doing that, I wonder? Can't even imagine what the first step would be. The first step? That's easy. You start with her. The person who witnessed your death. She should have some important clues, don't you think? Hey, right. Not only that. She might even know who I am. Yes, I'd say there's a very good possibility of that. What was I doing here tonight in a place like this? That woman probably knows the answer. That's right. Never forget that. She's the key to everything tonight. The key to everything? What do you mean? I'll know soon enough when you regain your memory. Yeah, I'm like a blank, sh blank sheet of paper right now. I should probably keep some kind of record of everything I learned tonight. That's a very good idea. Touch the book touch the book icon to view a record of what you've learned. Be sure to check it out now and again. Memories aren't always the most reliable things after all. New info has been added. All right then. I wish you I wish you good luck. Trick time. So now we have a few things open to us. First of all, the icon in the top left. We check this out. We've got info on people and phone book, which is information on pl places. And I'll explain later, or I guess the game will sort of explain for me why it's called the phone book in the first place. Uh, me, the mystery. I lost my life at a lovely, at a, in a lonely spot on the outskirts of town. I'm trying to regain my lost memory and find out the truth behind my death. My only lead is the red-headed woman who witnessed that death. A red-headed target. A woman who is at the scene of my death. I don't know her name or anything else about her. She's already been killed once by the hitman, and I saved her with my powers of the dead. Ray of Light. He calls himself Ray. I don't know who he really is. He taught me the secrets of the powers of the dead. Hunter in the Dark. He calls himself Nearsighted Jigo. He's a sniper who carries a golden shotgun. Somebody apparently ordered him to kill the red-headed woman and me. But he's gone now due to an unfortunate accident. And in the phone book, we have the junkyard. The place where I lost my life. It appears to be a junkyard on the outskirts of town. Here I met Ray, who taught me about the powers of the about my powers and a red-haired woman who might have who might have information about my death. I better not let her get out of my sight. And besides, I'm not the kind of guy who can just let a woman sit sneezing in the cold rain. I think you've said something similar to that like five times at this point. I think I'll try to move closer. So yeah, we can look around like this and then 
go into ghost form and do various different actions that will allow us to progress the story. This is a game that, you know, it didn't have too many sales here in the West, or even at all, so the fandom for this game is kind of low, but those who do know about this game and have played it absolutely love it. So for human, uh, you know, speech bubbles, looks like she's saying something to herself, but unfortunately I can't hear it from here. There's no problem for ghosts like us as long as your target's not too far away. Just like you do with your own thought bubbles, if you touch the thought bubbles of the living, you can listen in on what they're saying. Maybe I'll just take a little listen then. As always, watch for the thought bubbles of the living. They might give you some important clues. For the thought bubbles of the living, you want to go ahead and press Y instead of X. X is for dead people, Y is for al alive people. What in the world just happened? The crane moved all by itself, and then that big iron ball fell all by itself. It started raining all by itself, and then an umbrella came down all by itself. <gasps> oh my goodness! Don't tell me I have psychokinetic powers! But seriously, what in the world just happened? What's this? Did I write this note? Maybe I should give it a read. So you don't remember writing it, eh? No, I don't remember writing it. But even more importantly... Hmm, I didn't get a chance to read that note. Not to interrupt your train of thought, but I wonder if you've realized where this telephone call is coming from. Huh? How would I know that? Think back. Before you helped her avert her fate, did not telephone call come in at around this time too? Oh yeah! It's done. I'm on my way. That telephone call. Exactly. In other words, at this very moment on the other end of the telephone line, it's the culprit who ordered your murder. What? I recommend you possess the telephone. Once you've done that, I'll tell you about another one of your ghost tricks. And then I saw him. Right there, on the other end of the line, I saw the face of the man who ordered me dead. Is it done? Speak up, man! Did you get her? Who is this? Hmm, yes, a thousand pardons, my dear lady. I must have dialed the wrong number. Fa ha ha! Trace complete. That's him, eh? The man who stole my life. That's right. So what do you think? Would you like to go see him? You better believe I would. Then you do well to listen to me. We ghosts exist by possessing the inanimate objects. However, there's one way we can move from place to place from over great distances. And that would be... The dead can jump from point A to B by moving over phone lines. So that's why it was called the phone book in the little menu there because the way that we diff get to different locations is through the phone. Say what? I've done all I can to help you. You'll have to do the rest yourself. You're not coming with me? I'm afraid not. My powers have grown weak. I've already used up most of my remaining strengths just to get here tonight. But I had to come to ask for your help. My help? 
Many mysterious things will happen in this town tonight. I am trusting in you to get to the bottom of them and find out the truth. You're the only one who can do it. I want you to use your powers of the dead to find this truth. I'm grateful to you for everything you've done, but I can't promise I'll help. Tomorrow morning, I cease to exist. That doesn't give me a whole lot of time. I need to pursue my own mystery, find out the truth about myself. That's more than enough. Huh? If you succeed in doing that, you'll have done what I asked anyway. The two are one in the same. One in the same? Hmm. This desk lamp knows a whole lot more than he's telling me. Now then, when I called a moment ago, you, know, you now have the culprit's telephone number. The rest is all up to you. You got a new phone number. SYS 1729. And so the story of the search for myself begins. A story that will last only one night. Tomorrow morning, I will cease to exist, and I'm surprisingly okay with this fact. I have to find the answers before the sun comes up. Why was I killed? What exactly is going to happen in this town tonight? 